Does anyone else who wants to comment on what he said? Yeah, I would, uh, Kathy. Um, well, first of all, I would like to say that I'm very appreciative to hear an actor finally compliment America, America because we don't hear that often. So I'm grateful that you would do that. But I do think this country is amazing. My husband's a 31 year Marine and we've served, we all serve. And um, we actually live in a community, Indian River Colony Club in Melbourne, Florida that is 80% military here. And we've all fought for this country, we fought for it because we love it. And I do think that some politicians do, but I think many of them just want the power that goes with it. And we have the greatest country in the world. So I do thank you for saying that, Mr. Dreyfus. Kathy, I need to challenge you for one second. Sure. I don't think you're an undecided voter. I was, but I'm really strongly leaning. I don't hear anything that says that you are truly undecided. Well, probably not much anymore. Um, certainly, Kamala Harris did not do anything for me. I, I was really borderline, just like, I can't stand her. Um, and everything I had been listening to Joe Biden say, some of it's good. And I've met him along the way, but um, I, I just hear too many lies, especially tonight about, and no answers. That was the biggest thing for me. I, I just really need more answers if I were to ever go for um, Joe Biden and her, because they, they're not answering questions. So I want, I, people, need that. I want people to know this, that we go through a process and we ask them a number of different questions. We all did the same thing with you. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that screener process is supposed to screen out somebody like you, because I don't believe that it's possible that you could vote for Joe Biden, even though that's what you said in your screener. And it really- well, anything's possible, absolutely. No, 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 come on, Kathy, let's be honest here. And there are a lot of people watching and there are journalists gonna watch because I'm gonna <laughs> challenge you right now that I don't think you are honest in your application to come into this focus group. Well, I, I would not say I could never vote for him, I'm sorry. You vote that you were possible, that you were possibly voting for Joe Biden and possibly voting for Donald Trump. And let me yeah, ask all of true. you, because many people hard on her. Does Kathy sound like an undecided voter to you? No. No. How many of you would say that she does not sound like an undecided voter? Raise your hands. There you go, Kathy. We don't, we don't oh, buy sorry. it. So I just, I, when they talk about integrity, and I, I'm, I would assume that you've got kids and maybe you've got grandkids because of where you live, that you got to be honest because it makes people like me look bad. And it makes the polling profession look bad when people make this claim. And, and I see that Katie Kirk agrees with me, by the way. So, oh, I'm not surprised. Richard, thank you very much for doing this. We heard you and you had a very powerful impact. And uh, the last person I want to bring in is a genuine journalist, if he's still here, Tim Alberta from Politico, who is one of the, uh, one of the rising stars of his profession. <laughs> And he's always got good questions. And I don't know if he's still on. He may have jumped off, but I see him right there. So he's going to ask you the final question. I'm going to get one more question after him, and then we're going to be done. So, Tim, are you there? Tim, are you there? Tim, I just gave you the scoop of a lifetime. I just called out a panelist for not being an undecided voter, not knowing what was going to happen. And you're not there. So, okay, you missed it. Everyone here, I'm going to ask you, give me a word or phrase to describe this debate tonight. We're not asking about the election. We're not asking about Trump. We're not asking about Biden. I want you just to give me a word or phrase. In fact, you can give me a whole sentence, but nothing more than a sentence. In one sentence, tell me about tonight's debate. And Laura, I'm gonna start with you. Um, well, I didn't really learn anything new. We already knew about um, Pence sort of coming in and I didn't learn a whole lot about um, Kamala Harris tonight. Um, a couple little questions that I would have liked to, to have heard answers to, namely the, the court was a big one for me. John, can you give me a sentence to describe this evening? disappointed i still couldn't get some of the questions i've been looking for answered nick tell me about this evening in a sentence felt like i was in a older election like politics of yesteryear kimberly one sentence to describe tonight concerned i am concerned about what i'm going to do for the collective whole i'm concerned harry uh, i think there are a lot of evasive answers but overall i think it's uh, it's going to be pretty forgettable uh, except for the fly kurt from florida oh i'm sorry um i'm disappointed because i didn't get the clarity that I was hoping for. Debbie from Florida. 
kind of just bored. It was just boring. It was sounding like their speeches. It wasn't really setting anything off, you know, divisive. It just, it just was boring. John, describe tonight for me in a sentence. I felt like it was a bust. Uh, the stuff that I wanted answers to, uh, the questions were asked, but there were no answers, like the Supreme Court. I, I have a feeling that that's our consensus, that you really wanted an answer from uh, the California senator about that, but you didn't get it. Tony, give me a sentence to describe tonight. I don't think either candidate had any really outstanding moments, but I don't think that either made any horrible mistakes either. Minnie? I thought it was a depressing debate, and I thought the moderator was biased. Biased in which direction? Towards Pence, because she always let him go on and on and on. But when his opponent was talking, she would you know, be more effective at stopping her. Tom from Florida. I think they avoided the most pressing issue we faced possibly in a generation or more about to go off a fiscal cliff economically with so many people out of work and so many problems and they hardly touched on it, if at all. 100%. Tom from Nevada. Unhelpful debate. I wanted to learn more about uh, Harris. Uh, I didn't learn anything really. Um, the evasive uh, answers were a problem. Pence, it could have been a debate from two, four years ago, same Pence, so not very. Kathy from Florida. Wow, she's mute now. James mm -hmm. from Nevada. Tonight's debate was a huge disappointment for me. Um, it was a lot of uh, blame shifting. There were no real solutions to real problems. Americans are like trying to figure out how to pay rent. Uh, jobs are being lost, more important issues at hand. And it was just very, very disappointing for me to sit there. I have to listen to that. Frank, I'm sorry, I, I had a muted so you wouldn't hear noise here. I said I was very disappointed with no answers. And what answer did you want more than any other? More than any other? Probably the Supreme Court. Then the way that I'm gonna bring this to a close because we've gone to our hour is what advice do you have to Joe Biden and Donald Trump for the two debates that are remaining? I'll take six of you. Raise your hands if you want to give them uh, advice. Tom from Florida, and then Tom from Nevada, and then Tony from New Hampshire. Tom from Florida, you'll start. I want to know what they're going to do to help the people up, for the working class, the people that are struggling right now. They've got to tell us what they're going to do. It's, it's the most important issue that we're facing. Tom from Nevada. I would tell Trump to <clears throat> tone down his obnoxious personality and explain what promises he's going to make. He's got a record of keeping promises. What is he going to do? And for Joe, I would tell him to forget about the past and prosecuting the Trump administration. Talk about what specifically you're going to do going forward to accomplish what you say you want to do, which is bring the country back together. I would like to hear that. And I would like to hear how you're going to do it and answer the damn questions that the voters need to know. Tony from New Hampshire, by the way, you're being criticized by Mike Polis that he's criticizing a bunch of you for lying to me for claiming that you're undecided. I don't mean to jump away from this question, uh, away from my question, but I'm an open book here. Are you guys lying to me? Every time I do this, by the way, Tony from New Hampshire disappears. Are you guys <laughs> lying to me? <laughs> oh, no, no. So what do you say to, to Mike? Well, and I, you know, what I would say to Mike is, you know, we're, we're all coming at this from a, from a different angle. We all have different information. Uh, we all have different experiences. And, you know, it, it changes sometimes every day. You know, you weigh this and then you weigh that and then you weigh this again. Um, and we're probably undecided because this is more serious than it's ever been. I, you know, it, I mean, this is really critical. I didn't vote for anybody last time. I, I guess I wasn't undecided last time either. I don't know what to say. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with this even with friends and family and it's like, I'm undecided. I mean, I happen to be leaning towards Biden now, but just cause I'm exhausted, but like, I don't agree with either of the political parties fully in any way. I think it's, if you're someone that fully agrees with either of these political parties, I'm kind of looking at you like you're strange, but everyone's looking at us like we're the weird ones because we happen to maybe have some views on both sides, right? Like, I don't know. I, that's the part that I struggle with. Okay, just for the record, that's the best response I've ever heard an undecided uh, voter ever say. I love that. In fact, that's where I'm going to close it because I thought that was so good. Uh, guys, I want to thank you very much. A few of you will be invited on when we do this again next week. I appreciate it. 